But you know, Tulsi Gabbard's a member of our team here on Seculo, and she's joining us right now. And Tulsi, I wanted to get to a statement you made, and it, it ties into uh, your new book, which is uh, available for pre-order now. We'll do a lot more on it as we get closer uh, to its release in April. Uh, but I think you've got a first hard copy of it for, uh, with you today. And uh, again, there, you go. there it is. You and can, it's you a can pretty, put it up longer than that. It's a there pretty, you go. pretty bold title. It's For Love of Country, Leave the Democrat Party behind I, the idea here that you've called it uh, a party with the mentality of dictators it is increasingly difficult to deny that fact when we have a political party that is in power currently in the democrat elite using every arm of government available to them to undermine our freedom our freedom of speech our right to cast our vote for the candidate of our choosing to serve as president and commander in chief and weaponizing the Department of Justice and law enforcement agencies and the national security state, all to try to rid themselves of the major political opposition in this presidential campaign. This view is based on fact and reality. It has nothing to do with whether or not one likes or dislikes President Biden or President Trump or whoever your preferred candidate of choice is, every American should be terrified about what's happening here because if this is allowed to continue, if the Democrat elite are allowed to win after so abusing their power, they will run around this country and say, look, we have a mandate of the American people to continue doing what we're doing, which will dangerously and negatively impact our fundamental rights and freedoms in a way that I don't know that will be able to be reversed if they're allowed to have another four years at this. You said that um, they will say that Trump is a dictator in chief, that if he's elected, it will be the last election this country sees. You said it's laughable. You said it's so crazy, it's laughable. They're justifying their actions by telling themselves they need to destroy our democracy in order to save it. It's lunacy, and I'm reading it because I think it's very important what you said, and it's mindset and mentality of dictators. They're waging a multi-front battle, and they will stop at nothing until they are successful. We're seeing that with the legal cases, which are falling apart right before our eyes. I mean, it's like it, it you know, a the, 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 all the legal commentators on the presidential immunity case were saying, oh, they're never going to take it. They'll rule against Trump. And then in 24 hours, and I, and I said, look, I mean, I represented the president. And I argued on immunity, three of them, at the Supreme Court for him. You have to have presidential immunity because, it, Tulsi, if you were president and you made a decision in your official office, an official act, whether it was to engage in something or not engage in something, and then when you leave office, you could be criminally prosecuted for your official actions as president, you'd be having me sit in your office 24 hours a day making sure you're not getting in trouble and you can't run a country that way. It's exactly right, Jay. And you and I both know without a shadow of a doubt that if the roles were reversed and it was uh, Republicans coming after a, a, a former President Biden for whatever, you know, I mean, you, you could point to what they're doing right now and allowing millions of people to break our laws and illegally come across our borders as grounds for prosecution. I'm not a lawyer, but that seems like it could be a pretty clear cut case. Uh, you know, the, the Democrats in that scenario, that hypothetical, hypothetical scenario, would be screaming and making the same exact argument that you are making right now. It, it's crazy. And, you know, I, I, I tend to have a healthy skepticism about most things. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a wait and see kind of person. And, and I'm glad to see that some of these cases, at least, uh, are being exposed for what they are, which are essentially political hit jobs. But you know, you're exactly right. But you know what is so shocking to me, Tulsi, and all this, and we've known each other a long, long time, and you, you served our country in the military, you served our country in the military, you've served in Congress. If I was Joe Biden, if I was the president of the United States, you know what I would have done? I would have picked up the phone, called Merrick Garland, and said, what are you doing? Do you realize the precedent you're setting here? For every single, put Trump out of this, for every single president or cabinet secretary, the exposure you're putting people in, that's what I don't understand because they're, they're like myopic in their view to destroy this guy that they, they're not even thinking about the long-term consequences of their own policy positions. Jay, and, and that's the difference between you, a good man of character and integrity who cares about our country, and Joe Biden and those around him in the Democrat elite. Uh, they lack that character and integrity and care about one thing. And that's power. That's all they care about. So 
They don't care that they're setting it. They're, they're not stupid. They know they're setting a dangerous precedent here, but they don't care because caring about that would get in the way of their initial short term objective, which is hold on to power at all costs. And that's that's what I detail in my book. That's what I'm running around the country speaking to anybody who will listen and sounding these alarm bells about this very serious threat to our republic, our democracy and our freedom. Tulsi, we saw yesterday the dueling visits to the border and all of a sudden, you know, the Biden team wants to do at least appear like they're doing something on the border. There are Democrats even trying to advise President Biden to temporarily close the border to individuals trying to cross for two two weeks to a month before deciding what kind of policies to implement. They've had four years to implement these policies that would have saved thousands of Americans' lives. Uh, the number one killer is the drug that comes across that border of, of Americans between 18 to 45 is fentanyl. They didn't care about it for the last three and a half years. They care about it right before the election. Uh, the illegal immigrants coming over the border, killing Americans. Uh, they didn't care about it for the last three and a half years. Remember that family that was gunned down by a cartel in uh, Northern California? They're now now it's a few, few uh, right, uh, nurse. A, a few weeks, uh, yeah, a few months before the election. And I think you could talk to people directly for us right now and say, you know, they aren't doing this because they actually believe it. It is purely politics. And if they get power again, those policies will go right by the wayside. Jordan, it, it's so blatantly um, transactional on their part. Uh, this, They are trying to put up a facade that they actually care about the border. They care about security and they care about all these things that they haven't cared about for these last three and a half, now almost three and a half years. They the, the most insulting thing is that they think the American people are so stupid that we're just going to sit here and buy the nonsense that they're feeding us, this play acting that's going on. Uh, I heard a, a comment that came from President Biden's former communications director yesterday where she was talking on CNN about how Democrats need to show that they care more about how people in our country don't feel safe. Then she went on to say that she doesn't believe what President Trump is saying, that there are actually criminals running around committing crimes, uh, both against businesses and violent crimes uh, in this country. She's like, I don't buy it. But Democrats need to show that they acknowledge that people feel unsafe. What she said exposes them for who they are. They don't care about reality. They don't care about solving the problem. They don't care about the threats to our safety and security, both in our communities and at our borders. All they care about is winning votes, and they're going to do their best to put on this fancy show. We've just got to know that that's what they're doing and and let them know we're not going to fall for it. It's crazy. All right, I want you to hold, hold your book up again, and I want you to tell people, because we want you to be, our, we want our, our listeners to get this, For Love of Country. Uh, when is the book out, Tulsi? Uh, the book comes out in April. Um, I encourage people to uh, pre-order the book now. You can pre-order it on Amazon. And and what we're doing and, and, and how you'll help is to make it so that it's a lot harder for the New York Times bestseller list to try to ignore this book. Uh, it's a great book for maybe family or friends of yours, coworkers who who may be frustrated Democrats or independents, and they don't really know what to do in this election. And, and I talk a lot about my journey, my political journey in this book and the experiences I've had that inform my decision to leave the Democratic Party and why, as you said in the title, I'm very direct. For love of country, leave the Democrat Party behind. You know, the future. Say this, I've said this to you privately and I'm going to say it publicly. When you were in the debates for the presidency uh, in the Democratic Party, I called you and said you were, and our people, the people that were listening to this broadcast saying, if I was voting for anybody else, I'd be voting for Tulsi Gabbard because your debate performance was incredible and the positions you were articulating were incredible. But you just, if it's so clear that that, your former party, if you don't toe the line on everything, it's like the guns come out and boom, and that's exactly what happened. So I want to encourage our audience, pre-order that book. We know what it takes to get on the New York Times bestsellers list. Pre-order that book. We'll be talking about it more with Tulsi when she's back on. We appreciate it, Tulsi, as always. Thanks so much.